So we'll see many of you I, I mean approached me for that you are not getting the solution to the problem that I have given 1 minus x square instead of right hand side being 0. Huh? So, I had given a problem that you please solve this, this equation. Not 0, 1 minus x square within the domain x equal to x equal to x 1 and x 2. Now, here this is 1, I am not changing anything 0 to 1 length is x equal to 0, x equal to 1. Length of this, so L is 1. Hmm? And then I told you, please solve this problem. You can do it very quickly and with boundary conditions. With boundary conditions that uh, uh, I think some boundary conditions must have been given. What is the boundary condition given? Huh? Huh? Phi is equal to one. Phi is equal to one. So, here it is 1, here it is. So, then uh, so basic basic place where you are. So, this is perfectly all right you see uh, this part we must realize this part when you weight this weight multiplied by this then you take this Then, when you integrate uh, in the entire domain, it, it says entire domain element is for our own you know that we have created, it is the entire domain 0 to 1, then that has to be set equal to 0 and that gives us a kind of k times d plus b t. This term gives us. Huh? Now, this term when again you, so this you remember, when you weight this d x again set equal to 0, everything is set equal to 0 total. So, this one will give us a, a load term that is called p and we know what it is you know k is for example, k is k is you can take this k dash d x k is this p is P is this P i. So, this is how we compute, but then what is your n i n j? We are talking of total domain, we are talking of total domain, this has to be done over the total. That means, if you divide this into 4 elements, let us say. Are, um, Okay, 4 elements, so 1 by 4. Huh. So, my global shape functions are, see this is global, then you are talking of global, 
if it is 1 then there is no difference between element and global 2 there will be difference As, let me start with uh, let me start with 1 see if the total domain is visualized as a single element then then you will have this has to be done for the total total domain 0 to 1 0 to 1 you have to integrate this and all these are shape functions which are defined. So, if it is total is by single element then it is this is my shape function here. x equal to so this will be just x just x so but that is for single element now problem comes you have integrated now problem comes when you have this has to be done over number of elements this so I was going to take it anyway since you now let us divide this into two elements simple <coughs> simplicity. So, two elements two elements of two noded each. So, I have done it by 1 2 global node numbers local node numbers 1 2 1 2, but then this is integral has to be done. So, the global shape functions are here unity here 0 0. So, it is like this. So, this is n 1 this value is unity. So, this curve whatever curve is there. Now, this equation that means it is a 2 there are 2 linear bilinear there are from here to here 1 linear from here to here flat 0, but then we have to integrate from total from here to here we split that integration into half here and from again half to this. Similarly, the shape function for node number 2 will be taken as this. This is your n 2 total global global shape function. This is n 2 for node 2 the shape function defines both the lines not only single line this as well as this. That means, our coordinate our our origin is always over here in all these cases we are measuring from here. Then the third shape function because 3 nodes are there. So, there has to be 3 So, like before flat this this. So, this and this total is n 3 x. Now, I think I told you also that there are uh, I mean difficulties in this then we are not ad taking advantage of the uh -huh. if you, um, I mean if you have to take global shape function. Uh? So, one way is this, but then this this integral that you are doing yes they have to be done globally. Hmm? So, you are doing from here to here. So, if you do in a in this manner everything will come all right. Hmm? Even this load 1 load vector load vector for example, here 1 minus x square 1 is constant load 
any constant C 1, 1 is constant over the entire it is unity is it not this one I am telling one 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 part. Huh? So, this has to be found out for this this way load any load will be equal to integral of that i times 1 times d x and integrate over the entire. So, if you are here you please take this n 1 this one mm, n i and of course, here it becomes 0, but then you will get it. So, integrate this function if you are here then you have to take this shape function here total multiplied by this. Now, next one is x square see x square again is a different function you know, but then So, x square when x equal to 0 it is 0 when x equal to 1 equal to it is 1 in between it follows quadratic curve 1 minus I am I'm, I'm drawing only x square here. So, this one is this will be equal to at when x equal to half x cube that means 1 by 4, 1 by 4 here. Hmm? So, I have to take like this. So, I have to integrate supposing this function is to be then and for this node I am talking of global. Then I will take this shape function multiplied by this as it is uh, total and then integrate then only I will get P 1 load corresponding to this node. For example, here it is 1 and 1 see if you integrate this because this will be uh, you know this one this is what 1 minus x no, 1 minus x by 2 1 minus this is half no? this one is half this one is what is the equation of this this distance is half huh? 1 minus x by 2 yes when x equal to half huh? 1 minus 2 x 1 minus 2 x sorry 1 minus 2 x when x equal to half it is 0 and this is only defined over here. So, uh -huh. so you will have to multiply this this one then when you come here of course, this is shape function is 0 here there is no and uh, so you will have to take, but then uh, but then you are taking everything global. Now, how many supposing you have 10 elements then this will be very messy. Huh? So, that means there is a need need for change of change of coordinate that means we keep one see this first course I do not want to introduce advanced stuff like uh, isoparametric and you know that is not my intention here it is a practice you learn the method from first principle basic principle. Huh? Okay. So, I do not want to introduce isoparametric which you might have seen in the book. Huh? So, do not get confused. Huh? It is from frost pins. So, there is a need for change of coordinate. So, how why 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 there is a so if you have any general node i and j. and this is your 
and it is a linear. So, for example, let us say that we have a we define our global coordinate global global coordinate for this is from here to here it is x i. I am using capital or upper case letter for global huh? capital x i ith node huh? which goes and is this then capital or upper case x j it goes and x j minus x i equal to l length of the there is one only one global. So, so far you are doing everything in terms of global, but that is cumbersome it can be done only perhaps two elements three elements, but otherwise it becomes cumbersome because we normally find out the element coordinates with reference to single element with reference to a single element. So, there is a need for. So, let us define another coordinate which can be defined any from origin can be taken anywhere, but let me for simplicity let us take on the left hand side of the node. So, let us have another coordinate here where we measure and call that as a small x. X is, is small x is starting from here, capital X is starting from here. So, we must relate a small x to capital X. Is not it? We should relate a small x if my local coordinate is x, which is always left hand, I mean it is a one dimensional element, left node is origin. So, with the global, so now I will have to take a supposing a point P is here inside the element P. P can be also capital X, P can also be a small x, it can be reckoned by both the coordinates. <coughs> so, how to relate this these two coordinates? Yes, P. this distance from here to here is capital X. <coughs> then this distance from here to here is small x. So, I can say capital X is equal to capital X is equal to X i X i capital X i global uh, X i plus small small x. Hmm? Yes, this is all right, but how things will change? So, we will have to introduce this. <coughs> Wherever capital X is there, we, we will convert that into small x and uh, only thing you will have to put this then x j minus x i equal to l hmm. now what is your <coughs> in terms of what is your um, shape function n n now i will say i will not simply write n but n capital x i i will write here just to distinguish it supposing we want to find out shape function of this node i s node but with reference to the global what it will be since this is only two noded but global uh, so it will be what as per uh, we know Lagrange polynomial I have given you I have not explained Lagrange polynomial how to huh? are you sure 
how to generate the one dimensional shape function this uh, one di one dimensional shape functions huh? okay hmm. see there we got our uh, um, one minus let us say you take single element single element 1 and 2 so this is 1 minus x by l this is x by l now the same thing i can get <coughs> See, there is something called Lagrange polynomial. What the a polynomial of nth degree can be passed through n plus 1 points, hmm? and that is the equation of that polynomial is something like this. Uh, I mean, uh, you uh, how will you pass, you know. If you start from 1 minus uh, 1 a plus b x plus c x etcetera, that is one way, but then if you follow the Ritz approach, Ritz approach, you know. Huh? So, here I will say that uh, for example, there are two nodes. So, that means I am looking for n 1, I think everywhere I will have to write down n 1 x 1 or n x 1 y n x 1 n x 1 means uh, times phi 1 plus n x 2 times phi 2 is my function function that is I am trying to interpolate this is now how are what are these what is this x1 n x1 n x1 just now we have seen what it is 1 minus x by l i can i can write it by in general lagrange sorry lagrange you know there is a again a chapter in numerical analysis on interpolation any book on will have interpolation that means in between the two boundaries you want to interpolate a function interpolation there is another another concept is called extrapolation means boundary is this, but then I want to knowing some information within the boundary, I want to find out something beyond the boundary that is extrapolation. So, interpolation if you have number of data points how to pass a curve that is all equation of the curve is interpolating polynomial. So, inter so there is one famous person like Ranj. So, that he gave that any shape function of any x i we can also get by x minus x 1 x minus x 2 i. x minus x i minus 1 x minus x i plus 1 i is not there 1 is missing if there are n points x minus x n numerator. So, there are how many products are there? n products they are sorry see sorry n n minus 1 
there are n points x 1, x 2, x 3, x 2, x n. So, multiply all these x minus x minus except 1, because if you if you multiply that, uh, no here it does not become 0, but uh, there is a I will tell you where it becomes 0, but then that 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 one you have to uh, miss. And so, this is n minus 1 degree through n points you will have n minus 1 th degree. Now, if you divide that by <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, which one? What should I do here? X i minus x 1, wherever x is there you put i, wherever this x i. So, difference here also can be found out, because had there been x i here that product x i minus x i in the denominator means infinite this is not definable, then this cannot be defined. Huh? So, this is x i minus x i uh, plus 1 and then here x i minus. <coughs> so, this will give you number, this will be only difference of this will, these are all product of number, number product. sum. So, this gives us, this formula gives us Lagrange formula. Uh, directly, I will tell you, now if you have a two node, this is a general n, n noded. If you have a n noded 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 n, n this is this is a general formula for n noded element i can always have my shape function directly by using this formula this is called lagrange formula now this formula for example in two noded i will just tell you two node 1 and 2 n is equal to 2 so therefore n n x 1 will be what x minus x 2 only, because it, it can have only two products x minus x 1 and x minus x 2, only two, two nodes are there, so two products. Now, x minus x 1 we cannot take, because x minus x i is missing. Huh? So, this divided by x 1 minus x 2. Now, you can see this, this is equal to x minus x 2, if this is length is L, <coughs> if this is 0 and this is uh, x 1 is 0, x 2 is L. So, x minus L divided by x 1 minus x 2, x 1 is 0 minus x 2 is L and therefore, it becomes 1 minus yes, uh, you take minus. So, it becomes L minus x divided by L or it becomes 1 minus x by L directly. I thought I told you this, no? When I when I discuss quadratic, no, I said A B C only, I mean you take polynomial, huh? you take the conventional, huh? okay, all right. So, that is the conventional way of taking, <coughs> that is you assume this in the quadratic polynomial, find out the values of A B C coefficients. Huh? Now, here I can get directly, we do not have to do that, huh? treacherous uh, path and then find out the coefficient of A B C. Similarly, 
So, quadratic also I will derive. So, basic thing is that is uh, x n x 2 will be equal to x minus x 1 divided by x 1 minus no, sorry uh, x 2 minus x 1 because there are two only two nodes. So, this will be this and x minus x 1 is x minus 0 x 1 is 0 divided by L minus 0 and that is how you are directly getting x by L. So, you get directly you now take quadratic this interpol Lagrange quadratic 3 point you do not have to how come I did not this is uh, taking left root of the element as the origin it is not necessary I mean this I have taken here again it is not you, you can if you are using C, I can I can see this is this is not necessary. I can still take it need not be taken. I can still call that capital X1 and X2 as my I can call them. Only X2 minus X1 I will keep it L. I can write it in general general nodes, you know. It need not be because my this this coordinate here, this node is there this is x 1 and this is x 2. Now, measurement can be I can measure my origin is here it is like this. In that case it will be the first formula I cannot simplify it further huh? in that case it will be my n n n 1 will be n n x 1 will be n x 1 is here. So, 1 minus uh, x minus uh, x 2 <coughs> it will remain x 2 only because x 2 is a general coordinate divided by yes difference can be yes difference is minus l. So, minus l can be written uh, and therefore, your shape function I mean it is whatever you want to say this is my so, I can keep it like this also. Huh? It need not be because that one we are taking only for simplicity. So, my origin can be anywhere. Hmm? Now, quadratic if you have quadratic this distance is anything. So, let us call them as x 1, x 2, x 3 and these are general we are not we are we are we are we are uh, our coordinate is here capital x is starting from here this is the origin <coughs> but this is my element this is from here to here is my element e this is my element three noded element. So, I can I can write it that yes n x 1 as for that formula instead of avoiding a plus b x plus c x square. Otherwise, I will have to use a plus b x plus c x square let us assume and then then put the uh, write down the three equations three conditions x 1 x 2 x 3 find out the values of a b c and then put it uh, that is. Now, that path can be avoided and we can write it this is equal to n x 1 will be how many products are possible 3. So, x minus x 1, x minus x 2, x minus x 3 there are 3 points na 3 coordinates. Uh? So, total so only see so the out of this so I can have because the one one where I am writing that I will not write x minus this this is missing this one is missing one is missing here what is that x minus x i if i th node is there so I do not have to write i th node. Huh? So, I will write here only x 1 will be x minus x 2 x minus x 3 
divided by x 1 minus x 2 x 1 minus x 3. Some simplification is possible provided we give it is not necessary that uh, these be at midpoint or L by 2 or things you know once you can have all these can be numbers coordinates coordinates can be general coordinates can be what we explain that is for explanation because then it is quadratic looks nice you know 1 by L square. So, if you take L by 2, L by 2, L by 2 then I can write it then I will bring this origin over here then it will be simpler that is all otherwise it is not necessary that I do that. Huh? So, similarly, so now you have got a so any shape function can be written like this. So, this is a another uh, you are passing um, I mean, but that is all right. So, you have to write now. So, one way is that please use this coordinate system and do your computation in the global coordinate system, then everything will be fine you do not have to do, but then again it is not convenient for every element I would like to do my computation separately and I use my different local coordinate for every element. Huh? So, and somehow I will have to I will have to relate that to. So, that is why I introduced there has to be a global and local huh? coordinate. coordinate system and there. So, in fact, uh, to so so there where you know this uh, you have to ensure that if you ensure that this change of coordinate system then automatically all your computations will be all right okay then you define your element thing in local coordinate but then be clear what you are defining hmm? as someone said that it is given uh, nicely in uh, uh, Professor Sesu, Professor Sesu of mechanical engineering has written a thin you know it is a small book on FEM only I think only up to uh, elasticity problem or two dimensional thermal problem, hmm? heat problem and elasticity only only. So, there perhaps he I think you are telling Mr. Chaudhary you said you saw that book has he explained that in greater detail this. Okay. Okay, but I mean we have to see. Uh, I mean blindly we cannot take uh, because we have to integrate change of change of uh, this one will be required. And as we will proceed uh, after I am through with all my lecture material, then we will do extensively few few examples, you know, again. But this one you please practice uh, yes, based upon this. So, change of coordinate is required and that you will have to do. Then only you can you can you can compute everything in local coordinate and uh, then relate it to the global. It is Okay. Now, coming back to because we have we have finished this first order transient problem that means C D dot plus K D. If you have this equation T greater than 0 subject to the condition that d at d at what 0 is given as d 0. Do you agree with this no? initial condition what is this d at 0 at d 0 is the initial condition. So, the governing equation. So, I think all possible solution techniques uh, have been uh, studied now and we know how to solve this huh? okay, by various. Uh, now, let us take the second one you know that is this. So, I will take directly the general m d double dot plus c d 
dot plus k d mm, equal to f t. This is this is the general dynamic equation, second order dynamic equation. Mm, and uh, with condition here is that d at 0 is d 0 is given displacement at initial condition is uh, prescribed and also d upon d t d upon d t of d at t equal to 0, which we are calling as d 0 dot r r v 0 dot is velocity. So, <coughs> so these two conditions are given. So, so what is our, our, our problem definition is given this differential will be subject to the condition this and this find out or evaluate or generate evaluate d t as a function of time. This is what is your you have to find out d t as a function of time. So, how will you do it? Now, just like in the first order transient problem, we had a method initially Euler's forward uh, Euler's forward difference formula, which is based upon very simple concept. Here also, we have a very simple formula based upon <coughs> second derivative is there here. So, people will always think in terms of central difference, because second derivative there is a central difference formula available straight forward involving three, three stages uh, n minus 1, n and n plus 1. If the three, if you are finding out at nth, uh, nth stage this one. So, you, you know how to find out this. So, it is called central difference formula. The first one that got developed is the most uh, central difference central difference formula <coughs> hmm? okay how do you do this we write down the equation first let us write down at t equal to t n please write down the equation at so it is m d n double dot plus c d n dot plus k d n equal to f also at n t equal to t n f n because this equation also is valid at each and every point it is valid. So, this is ok. Then we start looking for how to replace these derivatives by finite difference forms, how to replace the derivatives. So, this one the first one will become m. So, this one if you are at this you know in time, this is n, n minus 1, n plus 1 all so this one is given by dn minus 1 
minus 2 d n plus d n plus 1 plus error here is this much you should know and you should be able to derive error here is second order error term exists. Now, plus c now you are here we are writing we are looking for equation here this is ok now this is no difference no problem here c now we are here. So, there are two number of one is you can use forward difference for derivative backward difference for derivative or central difference since you are using central difference for second derivative why not use central difference for and be consistent. Huh? So, we that is what is the. So, we take d n plus 1 d n minus 1 that means, you take here and take here one ahead one backwards, but only thing is now this becomes 2 times delta t interval becomes 2 because from here to here this minus this divided by the total the good thing is here also the error term is same is square whether it is 2 2 delta t square or delta t square e square is square 4 times come that number is not important only delta t in terms of delta. So, plus k times d n equal to f n. So, this is the discrete form. We have discretized this differential equation has been discretized and written in now transformed into finite difference quotient ratios finite difference quotients or ratios. Now, it is uh, up to us now to uh, what to collect coefficients because we want to here collect coefficients of uh, various terms. Mm? So, if you see yes. collect coefficients. So, please take coefficients of n plus 1. Hmm. We will take the view that knowing knowing n minus 1 and n we will predict n plus 1. That means, this is a two step method. So, knowing the two histories previous histories we will predict this. Huh? So, left hand side please take d n plus 1. So, if you collect the coefficient d n plus 1 coefficient comes out to be m by delta t square c m by yes there is 1 here m by delta t square 1. So, it is m by delta t square and another n plus 1 is here plus c by 2 delta t plus c by 2 delta t. So, please keep this in a square bracket put d n plus 1 coefficient. So, this term has been taken this term has been taken into account. Right hand side, right hand side we have uh, yes equals 
equals means it is now approximation because huh? <coughs> all the error term you will not be able to carry forward. So, right hand side first take coefficient of d n. The d n 2 m by delta t square uh, this coefficient is there there is only one d n <coughs> yes to uh? what is that k achha, k d n also is there yes yes uh, plus k d n so minus this is there and plus k d n so on the right hand side this will when when it will go uh, so minus so it will become so it will become 2 by 2 m by delta t whole square minus k d n. So, this one is taken care of sorry uh, I mean where is d n d no 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 no, no. Oh, k d n ye hai na is mein. d n has been taken care of this this d n this one and then this one also has been taken care of ok then what else n minus 1 what is remaining n minus 1 there are many see n minus 1 is here m by e this will go on the right hand side and become minus then there is uh, this also is there and that will become plus huh? two terms are there. So, so on the right hand side plus c upon 2 delta t minus m by delta t square. Uh, d n. Have you taken all the terms? Huh? F n, F n, F n is remaining. Other terms have been, I think, taken care of. Yes. Uh, plus minus nee, plus F n. Plus F n. Hmm. Now you see here. This is my algorithm. First of all, it is I do not have two conditions uh, available to me in the uh, starting. So, this is a non self starting algorithm as it is n equal to 0 you will need not to uh, I mean n if you want to find out. So, this is the initial condition you will also need another value of d at the previous one which is not available. So, it is a non self starting algorithm hmm? we will have to do something. Uh, I think we have done it earlier. So, we will have to do something, we will have to make use of the, but it is general it is ok. So, if you know two stages solution n minus 1 that means 1 and 2 you can find out at third. If you know 3 and 4 you can find out at fifth there is no problem, hmm? but then is it explicit or implicit? Huh? In the present form m and c if both m and c are full matrices then it is not you are solving equation at every stage and I, I have told you that we always try to simplify this and we try to see whether what are the matrices which can be diagonalized <coughs> and m and c are candidates for diagonalization both mass matrix and c matrix their behavior is similar huh? they can be diagonalized. So, both m can be transformed into m lumped and similarly c c can be c lumped if you do this then this turns into explicit is it not then it turns into x because then this will be diagonal 
left hand side whatever it is you know this divided by d then it will be diagonal matrix and each degree of freedom can be computed without uh, any problem. So, this is explicit provided this is m l c r diagonalized this is non self starting you cannot start it, but algorithm is ok and uh, since it is explicit means again delta t will have to be less or equal to some delta t critical. The moment you have explicitness this will be coming in. How do you get again delta t critical? Again by eigenvalue analysis of the second order transient equation. Eigenvalue means put f equal to 0 your this one this equation, huh? but then now it is second order equation this this is the equation sorry this is the equation. So, suppress this eigenvalue means make it homogeneous set equal to f equal to 0 I want solution for d. Huh? So, sec if you see your differential equation book any dif second order difference what is the form of solution it is cyclic it goes up and down it is not exponentially decaying like first order first if this is not there then the d has a exponentially decaying solution that is why we took minus uh, last time d bar e to the power of minus lambda t lambda is some parameter uh, which you call uh, eigen value now, here we will have to take. So, again you do the eigenvalue analysis for finding out delta t critical and uh, please find out um, what will be the solution by the way. Solution will have you taken d t can be some bar some amplitude times e to the power of you understand sin omega t cosine omega t if you combine both sin and cosine because it could be sin it could be cosine also. So, i i omega e to the power i omega t this is the general solution this is the general solution. And once this is general solution, then you can find out huh? they are they are very true to the timings, you know. <laughs> huh? In this one, they are very true, very, very huh? punctual <laughs> here. <laughs> So, so I, so now this one if you substitute in the equation, you see you will have to find out the eigenvalue. I think that is standard standard problem. You know, you will have to find out for uh, then uh, then compute the determinant determinant equal to set equal to zero. I think we did one problem now for one dimensional. So here also, and here also you will find finally this omega omega is the circular frequency you know to tell you circular frequency per cycles per second huh? circular frequency omega is circular frequency of vibration or circular frequency this is eigen value this is the special value here also you will find that delta t critical after doing the complete analysis comes out to be that this should be omega maximum. Whatever is the maximum frequency of the system if you take delta t critical will be and again the same old irons formula or his hypothesis applies here also you need not do this huh? this will always be this will always be so this is this will always be 
um, giving uh, that will be liar. So, this will be always less than 2 upon am I writing it correct? If you do element, element frequency will always be slightly more. So, delta T v it will give you slightly smaller. So, but any it is ok. So, that is why I have written slightly smaller here. Hmm? So, this all right. Now, so then But what about the starting problem? Uh, you have to have a starter formula. You know, all these schemes need a starter. The starter means, you see, you substitute first this formula. Problem is coming. So, I will just, I will take this and I will put n equal to 0 uh, n yes n equal to minus 1. So, n equal to 0. So, then you have this coefficient. Let us call this something because otherwise it, it will never be this total. This will be ml now, this will be cl now. This is uh, let us call this by some what m star but then anyway this bracket divided by d 1 equal to this bracket divided or uh, multiplied by d 0 plus this bracket d minus 1 a uh, plus f 0. Hmm? How to eliminate this? Yes. We have one condition that velocity over here is given to us. This is given. This is given to us, which we have not made use of. Velocity at 0 is dot is known to us or which we are calling also as v, v 0. This is given to us. So, V 0 is equal to nothing but D 1, D 1 minus D minus 1 by 2 delta T, U central difference. This is, this is, this is ok. See, you, we are here. 0, we are here this is 1 and this is here minus 1. So, okay. the derivative here d 0 dot r velocity here is equal to this minus this, this minus this divided by 2 delta t. This is 2 delta t, delta t and delta t and therefore, <coughs> same, 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 same approach. You see, there is nothing new here. So, d 0 can be written. So, we are getting here uh, d to the power minus 1. So, it will be equal to uh, d minus 1 will be equal to d 1, d 1 minus 2 delta t into v 0. One simple formula we are getting. Hmm? this we are getting. So, please substitute this here, substitute this here. Hmm? 
Huh? Huh, then D1 term is here also, D1 term on the left hand side also, uh, there will be, you will find there will be addition. Hmm? Hmm. And m by, see this one is, this d1 term will be with minus m by delta t square, there is already m by delta t square here. So, so <coughs> and c, c will perhaps get cancelled, yes, you are right. So, substitute it here and you get your starter, huh? get your, then substitute, get your starter. So, please complete this, get your starter algorithm. Okay. I am sorry, you know, still my cold has not gone for the last maybe now more than a week. Now it is a running nose. Earlier it was cough, huh? then fever, now both fever, cough has gone, now it is running nose. Huh? So, so, maybe before going, so, all right, I think then, then we stop here. Huh?